All right, good evening, everybody. It's about six o'clock. Got another bonus trip to the garage. It's uh, Tuesday, the 12th of March. Heading down Route 95 in uh, around Groton, Connecticut right now on my way over to the garage. I just dropped the boy off at basketball practice, so I'm gonna have about an hour and a half over there to continue to play with some bonnet work. So hopefully uh, we'll get it, whoops. Hopefully we'll get it lined up a little bit better than it was last night. And, uh, We'll have some fun. So a lot of uh, a lot of people. I got about a half a dozen comments so far. Get this camera adjusted before I hurt somebody. Saying that they had no idea that that center transverse uh, support tube adjusted the way that it did, and I agree. I had no idea either. I know the pivot tubes also uh, obviously called pivot tubes, so they have to have some uh, function there with pivoting. No idea that they had some adjustments, so I did play with them. I think it simply comes down to the fact that the workshop manual was written for the technician and the auto mechanic at the Triumph dealerships and not for the factory. And that the expectation by Triumph was that those tubes would never be adjusted outside of the factory because why would you do that unless there was accident damage or something like that. And that would be like an extreme case, I guess. So there would be no need to make adjustments to those tubes. So therefore they didn't document it. That's my guess. So anyway, I'll uh, continue the drive here and uh, get you to the garage. All right, here we are. There's one of the 240s. All right, see you on the inside. message in my last video that I had found the hardware for the support bracket here where it attaches several flat washers and all that kind of stuff I'm gonna go ahead and clean this stuff up clean it all up and uh, that's really my only object for this uh, hour and a half or so that I'm here is to get this the side to side portion of the bonnet adjusted properly again I, I think this uh, trailing edge here I'm gonna have problems with no matter one one I got this tear that I'm gonna try to hammer flat a little bit I also got a little deformation in the other side but I think that's uh, I think that's okay. One of my viewers, or excuse me, one of the guys on the Triumph Experience forum had mentioned that he put a plate in here, and I believe it was on the horizontal portion and as specifically, and just like an extra piece of metal reinforcement. That might not be a bad idea. Drill a couple holes in here and, and do a quick plug weld, especially since I'm going to weld anyway. If it's uh, deformed here and cracked, and I already repaired that once, I'm looking at the same thing on the other side. It may be worth just a just an extra layer of metal there. I don't think that it's going to impact anything. So that's uh, that's something that I'll look at doing. But anyway, going to get it all unbolted, get it all cleaned up, all the nuts and bolts, and get them uh, nice and nice and pretty, and uh, get some adjustments done. That took a while. It's already ten to seven. About another hour left or so. Um, so what I've got in here, I didn't show you that stack up. Is there's three washers here and three washers here and then just a regular flat washer, lock washer on the nut. Those um, flat washers that are kind of spacers inside there are the same as these guys right here. Nothing, uh, nothing real special. If you can see that, sorry, the lights in there is pretty bad. So right now I've got everything in there, but it's all loose. Also uh, of note, at least because I painted them maybe or just because of the way it is, these clamps here will kind of uh, compress themselves onto the tube. So if you intend to have the tube move in and out before you get it set set, I'd recommend that you loosen these clamps up and kind of pop them off. They will stick on there pretty good. That way you're not fighting. Um, you can see how that's loose. You're not fighting the movement of the tube inside the clamp if you want that to float. So everything's loose. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bonnet down and try to eyeball what I'm looking at as far as where I think stuff needs to go. Again, I expect this side over here to be too far in. I expect that side over there to be slightly too far out on the front. So I'm going to try to align the spaces here to try to kind of give me that because I know when I go to flex and pull down over there, both sides are going to get pushed out equally. So I want to try to get as much correction as I can by putting the, uh, by tightening these brackets down first, I think, and then, uh, and then going from there. I think it's, I think it's still hit and miss, but we'll see. All right, so again, looks like I'm right back to where I was yesterday before I figured this whole thing out. So I got about a half an inch of a gap there. 
and I'm sticking out a little bit over here and again a lot of that or some of that can be taken care of with the clamp but obviously this over here is sticking out pretty good still oh, let go. so now I'll lift it up and when I lift it up I know I want the passenger side wing to be pressed out a little bit and I want to suck the driver side in just a little bit and look at the gaps here and see if I can kind of eyeball it here before I go pressing on the tube I have my spacers again, just my, my wood shims that you would use to like shim a cabinet or something. That's what I'm going to use in this wing over here. And I'll, and I'll drop it down and see how much I get out of it before I tighten anything. And then over there, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. All right, I don't expect perfection over here, but it's definitely better than it was. So I think I'll go ahead and, and be happy where that, where that shim is right now. And then over here, I didn't do anything. But if anything, I want to push in, and again, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. So I'll lift this guy back up, and uh, I think I'll play with that before I play with the tightening this side. All right, so all I'm going to try to do here is, is just kind of hug this thing a little bit and try to move in on the tube this way and push in on the, on the wing this way at the same time while tightening, tightening it. Got that about as good as I could get it. That was painful. So now again, I got this shim in over here. I'm gonna lower the bonnet. See how my gaps line up. All right, that side over there is not coming in real well. push that out a little bit over there I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do anything about that I might we'll see here I'm going to go ahead and tighten tighten this guy up over here now that since I'm over here with the shim that's in it and uh, see what happens so that's the gap that I'm looking at with the bracket tight and this is uh, typical of what I got last night, I think. I'm still going to have problems over here, I think. And uh, when, I, when I go to bow this out, I'm not going to be worried about the back. I'm going to be worried about the front. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull down on that bracket a little bit and see if I can get it to uh, flare out this wing. All right, that's snugged up. It's not real tight, tight enough. All right, so I still got a uh, pretty good amount here, and obviously this in the back here. But uh, one of the comments that I had from the guys on the forum, let me grab the flashlight. So if you look in there, that's the latch mechanism and see if I can shine the light in there still and not uh, so you can see it. If I can shim that latch mechanism a little bit I might be able to push that out but I'm not sure that it's going to work in this direction as much shimming out as it would be shimming in and that's not real tight right now but it's not like the other side making the contact. Now another thing I've noticed here is you can see how much I think you can see how much the bonnet bows up on the inside towards the center there so the way that I see it is that could be either that the bonnet is too squished together and it's causing the center to rise up so the, that that uh, mounting plate is probably right about in here I would think so it could be some tension on that is causing that to rise up uh, but that would tell me I think that I would need to spread it out more to try to get that center to flatten I didn't look at that so I'm going to pop the hood back up here, the bonnet, 
and uh, play with that tension point there in the center, the mounting point for that transverse tube and see if that center of the, uh, the bonnet flexes there. So I took all the tension off of that tube and of course I didn't measure anything. So we'll measure it now from the uh, top of the front sail plate there to about the center or so, which I'm going to say is right about there. And that we're looking at about a tenth of an inch. I think that's about a tenth of an inch of a, of a height difference there. Obviously my ruler's not centered here, but as long as it's the same place, I'll be okay. So right now I got a tenth of an inch height difference between the center of the sail plate and the bonnet. I'd like to get rid of that. Now I'm going to pull down real hard, as hard as I can on that center tube. You can see that that gap opened back up again. I'm going to pull down as hard as I can on that center tube and hopefully flatten in the bonnet out a little bit and see if that helps. This is actually, uh, I mean, not, not, not having any fun, don't get me wrong, but this is kind of interesting. All right, so I pulled down as much as I could and then it looks like it sent the bonnet the other way. So now it's two tenths of an inch. So definitely putting tension on that is making me bow up. And I gotta think about that. I'm not really sure why that's making, that, that makes sense to me. And it's tending to crimp the bonnet instead of flatten the bonnet. Um, but I'm kind of shooting, uh, shooting from the hip a little bit here. I got another idea. I'm gonna pop a bonnet up and show you something real quick and, and talk through that. So this is that center mounting point. And if you can see, the holes are slightly off to the left a little bit, which tells me that this bracket is not centered in the bonnet. And you can even see uh, there that it's definitely to the left. And if you look at the tube, the tube end sticks out, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch here and probably pushing a half an inch there. So again, shooting from the hip because I don't have any zero reference, I think what I'm going to do is loosen it back up again get that center bracket snugged up and get that semi aligned in the center of the bonnet. That way at least I know I have a good idea that I'm going to be pushing on both sides in the same way and then see, uh, see if that's going to do me any good. The, the bonnet is definitely not centered up but the pivot tubes here, these guys, I don't think are going to give me enough motion side to side, you know, to move the slide, the whole thing over. I don't think I can push the whole bonnet over like, like I, uh, I think I need to, especially because the wings are in, are in essentially that one over there sticking in and this one over here sticking out. So I'd have to push the whole bonnet kind of to the right a little bit. And I'm not sure that I can do that. I may also disconnect these, uh, the, the gas struts here and, and, and try not to kill myself with that. And, see if that might help. Got this bracket tight and center and I have these over here loose. So what I'm going to try to do now I think is push out on that one and get the distance between the tube here and the support bracket the same as on the other side and kind of try to meet the difference. So I need to come in on this one I know that. I need to come out on this one I know that. What I don't know is how much, right, and how it's going to multiply, if at all. So I'm just going to kind of push in over there and see how far in I can get it. Kind of pull out over here and kind of see how far out I can get it. And then lower the bonnet and look and see how it lines up. And cross my fingers that uh, it'll be pretty close and that maybe I can just pull down on this center guy here and have it, uh, have it come right in because I'm sure that's exactly what's going to happen. Don't think I really did anything here, but... I got uh, about two and a half tenths of an inch on this side and about two and a half tenths on this side, on that side, a little bit longer on that side because I couldn't push in without moving the whole car uh, because it's on the rollers. So now I'm going to drop the bonnet down and I don't really expect it to come in too well, but now the tube is centered maybe off of the, off the wings and let's see if that makes a difference with regards to when I pull down on the tube if that's going to do anything. So we'll drop it down here, see what we end up with. All right, still sticking out on that side. You know, it's not actually too far off over here at all. That's actually, that's actually pretty close. Well, that's, that's better. 
So right now, without pulling down on that tube at all, I think I'm about where I was before I had centered it up, but it looks like this gap here is open right back up. Yeah, that's back to back to two tenths of an inch there. I'm not really sure what I can do about that. So I'm, I'll lift it up, I'll loosen that center strut up a little bit, I'll push down and see if I can get this to, to flare out over on this side, but I'm, it's just going to run into the same problem with it flaring out on this side. So I'm not sure that I'm really doing any good here. I said I was going to undo the struts, so let's undo the struts. Well, guess what I think I'm getting rid of? That actually got a little bit better, I think, not much. And I think this got a little bit better over here too, but not much. But uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to push down on that bar. I might loosen this bracket up here real quick. I only got about another 10 minutes before I need to leave. I think I'm going to loosen up this bracket over here, push in as hard as I can, and see if I can get it to uh, move in a little bit further on this inside wing here, and then lift it up. And I may need, uh, need some measurements for the old bonnet stay because I think that puppy's going to go back in. That's not perfect, that's for sure. Neither is that one, but they're about the same amount off. And I think the way I have it right now, I'm not going to play with it anymore, at least not tonight. I need to get going. So these, uh, the bonnet struts, I think are hurting me a little bit, as much as I hate to say that, because I really like that kit. But I think I'm going to have to go back to the regular old uh, strut. Somebody had said that I don't think the bonnet strut kit is what's messing me up. Um, I, I think that's definitely contributing. I don't think that was all of it. I do think that that center support needed to get in there and needed to get adjusted and, and still probably needs a little bit of adjustment. So I don't think... Uh, that that you know it was the bonnet struck kit all its own but it definitely is messing me up a little bit and I think you can see here too this gap has opened up a little bit closes up in the center and it's relatively closed compared to the other side over here so that tells me that this part of the bonnet that part of the bonnet over there can still come back a little bit um, this looks pretty well aligned here off the sill but yeah I definitely oops, sorry I'm zoomed in I definitely have uh, have some room over here where I can I can come back a little bit and that's just a matter of loosening this up and, and knocking that back I think I still have some room it's going to be close anyway what a headache but uh, I'm coming along tomorrow night's my actually no kidding visit so that that's a that's a good deal I'll have another wonderful five or six hours to play with this stuff so until then, I'll see you. All right, welcome back. It's uh, Wednesday the 13th. Back over the garage, third day in a row. That's a record, I think. I got the, uh, the uh, bonnet stay tube, bonnet support tube, prop thing, whatever you want to call it here. Took it apart, cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, I'm going to be putting it back together now. Now there's two pieces to this thing. You can kind of see that this hole here has been elongated just from uh, years of use. I do have the one for the black car. So I may find myself getting that out, but uh, this is, is functional. So that kind of goes in like that. And then you've got the flattened out sides here. One part of this goes to the uh, part on the uh, upper turret, the front suspension turret. This other part here goes to the wing. I looked at the black car, since I don't have a hole, if you remember, I talked about that. And uh, used the, the black car's inner wing as a template to try to line the holes up. I also have some measurements and uh, so that'll fit in kind of like this. So I'm going to put this back together. Inside in the middle here just gets a, uh, a collared nut or bolt. Excuse me, you can, uh, I think you can see that that guy's a little bent there. I think I'm going to reuse it though. Two real, real thin washers that kind of go in between and then a nylock nut and a thick washer that goes on the outside. So I'm going to put this together. I bought some new hardware today for the other ends since I didn't have a proper makeup for the ends except for this one bolt here and uh, I got all the right washers and everything for that. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and try to get this prop in and get it in uh, properly. All right, so we are looking at where the bonnet stay needs to go. 
Now this is the passenger side. If you notice on the passenger side, the, I put the uh, strut back in just to give me some support. There's two holes, one obviously where the strut goes through and this guy down here. Now, as far as I know, nothing goes into these holes. So I don't ever know what they ever were for. But on the driver's side, there's only one hole. Nope, there it is. I got a piece of tape over it. There's only one hole. So what I did was I jumped on Rimmer Brothers and I printed out a picture of the inside of a new wheel arch that you can get. And these are pressed by British Motor Heritage and Steelcraft guys. So I assume it's kind of correct. And I tried to roughly measure the distance. There's all three holes marked on here. Here's the bonnet stay hole and then the, uh, that upper hole and the lower hole. Now this is for the, the passenger side, but I, I guess it's a generic stamping and they put all three holes in all sides no matter what you do. So it's not straight on. So I expect a little bit of a distortion here because you're not looking at it directly. But I measure the distance between all the three holes on the picture and then set up a ratio where if I call the distance between the bottom and this hole here one, and then I just did the math and figured out a ratio, the distance from this hole to where the bonnet stay is was about, uh, what did I get, one point, or no, 2.2, no, 1.6, excuse me. And then from the lower hole to the bonnet stay hole is about 2.2. So that's the ratio. So then I came over to the car and I measured the distance, no kidding, between the two holes on the passenger side, the bottom hole and the, uh, the upper hole, and I got 52 millimeters. And then I multiplied those by the ratios that I came up with, and I got about 83.2 millimeters from the top hole to the bonnet stay, and I got about 115 or so, 114 millimeters from the bottom hole to the bonnet stay. I also did the math real quick because I'm smart like that now that I've got my college degree and figured out the angles um, just to kind of back me up but I don't think I'm going to need them. So what I did was measure all of those distances and try to pencil in where everything was. Now this one was easy because it's just a straight line down but I'm curious how I'm going to get the angle. So to try to support that you notice that I got two holes punched in this piece of paper here. I went to the black car which only has the bottom hole and the, and the bonnet stay hole, and the bonnet stay hole in the black car was all blown up too. But I essentially tried to center up the two holes and I punched holes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this piece of paper, I'll put it over the hole that exists, in other words, the top hole, and I'll put it over the bonnet stay hole that I've marked and see how close I am with my pencil and hopefully it's there. And I'll just kind of tweak it in if it's not but I know that this distance should be about right. The only thing that might be a little off is the angle. So just to back me up at the final time, I'll put the bonnet stay up there and uh, I'll show you how that kind of works when it bolts up to make sure that it's actually gonna lock the bonnet in before I drill any holes. All right, so I've got the bonnet stay cleaned up here, getting ready to put this back in, the new bonnet prop. And uh, you can see that the, you got a flattened end here and a flattened end there. And they essentially are the same direction, like that. The bonnet stay goes in with the um, I the capped part, I guess, the of the top of the the bottom of the U or whatever you want to call it, facing up. So when it catches the, the thing, it kind of flexes in the center a little bit and goes like this. This side attaches to the uh, the wheel arch. That side down there attaches to the uh, support uh, or the, the turret, the passenger driver side turret, suspension turret, there's a little bracket on that that comes out. So I'm going to get this lightly um, attached and look and see how my measurements went. Alright, so depending on how I measurement, measure it and the, the bottom hole being the key there, I either uh, have one at the larger hole or one at the smaller hole. If I bring the, the bonnet stay up there, you can see that it's quite a distance away and it's just simply because these struts just lift the bonnet that much more vertical. So I'm going to kind of split the difference here and, and kind of drill right in the center. I've got a piece of tape on this side to hopefully prevent incidental breaking of the, uh, the Raptor liner here, but I'm not that concerned. I'm probably going to end up putting a whole new coat of Raptor liner inside of here. Um, so I'm going to drill a real small pilot hole first, and then I'm going to drill, um, drill a hole about the same size as, uh, as these guys here trusty little spring-loaded punch to try to get the hole or the uh, little notch in here so I have something to grip on to. Oh, 
Nice little seating point for the drill bit. All right, see if a bolt fits. All right, fits just fine. So now we're gonna put the washers on there. This takes like a fat washer assembly. Excuse me, not a fat washer, but a, a, but a fender washer. So extra wide washers. And uh, it doesn't, can't really, I don't know which side goes on which side, so I'm gonna use both of these for now. All right, so that's good. Get that guy through there. Now I've got to um, pull down a little bit here. All right, we'll tighten all this stuff up and see if it works. All right, so as you can see, it's supporting the bonnet. Important safety tip, don't undo this one over here without putting another support on if you're not real sure about the security of that one over there. So idiot boy here decided to pop that thing off and the bonnet didn't fall down on me or anything and chopped my head off but it shifted a little bit it got all scared so now we'll try to put it down so you kind of pull back on it here and it should release and then it should fold down nice and easy and not smack anything on the way down and it is going to smack something Looks like it's going to smack onto the top of the firewall, but I don't think it matters. Looks like it's resting on the top of the the bulkhead, but I think it's I think it's going to self-adjust out of that. I think that's okay. That might be what that notch was in there for. So anyway, so that uh, it's clamped down now. Undo it, bring it up, see how it goes. Never lift by the latches. But I gotta lift this side since it's not aligned properly. Yeah. Let's see if it just kind of pops in. All right, so it's not popping in quite all the way. And then see if you could see how I kind of locked it in. Now that's that flamingo leg looking thing that I was kind of talking about. So now that's that's in there. That's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so that's great. So that worked. Got the hole lined up good enough. I'll leave that in there now to allow me to do my adjustments and everything, and I'll uh, continue playing with some gaps. All right, so back to the gaps here and, and trying to play with this, this pivot tube or the transverse tube again. I looked at the black car. If you look in between the, the bonnet and this transverse tube, you'll see those washers. I'd mentioned those. I stacked them up three and three. I didn't take any pictures when I took this stuff apart, so that was a big mistake. I thought I, I, thought I had documented all this stuff, and I, and I went back to find it, and I could not. So a uh, gentleman on, uh, on the forum, John, mentioned that he thought he had four washers per side. I think what I'm gonna do, this, uh, what this hopefully can do and what he had mentioned is that it'll fix that bow that is in the center. If you remember yesterday when I was here, I had this bow in the center and it was lower on the sail plate than it was on the bonnet. And he's pretty sure that that's what those washers can help me adjust. Again, nothing in the workshop manual for this. So to kind of do a go no go a little bit, I'm going to pull all the washers off the top and put uh, one or two on the bottom just to kind of make it an exaggerated thing and see if I can see any difference. And uh, if that makes a difference, and then I'll try to tweak it in a little bit better and then uh, get these these arches uh, trying to be set here and then and then kind of go for for final fitment of gaps. And then I think, depending, regardless maybe on how that comes out, I'm going to get some doors on just to kind of go to something else and, uh, and start my frustration with the doors since I'm already done with my frustration on the bonnet. So I just pulled all the washers out. And it's the best that it is, but it's still about a tenth of an inch gap. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I do have to press down on that bar just a little bit. If you can see, I have just a slight indentation there and probably about the same over here, just really little. So I'll pull down on the bar just a tad and uh, get it tightened up. 
And then just from probably taking out the, the bonnet struts and everything, this gap is still good, but I opened up a little bit on this side. So I'm gonna play with the, uh, the hinges just a little bit and, uh, and see if I can get this thing dialed in. This uh, back here, I'm happy with this too. Actually, this, this isn't too bad back here. I think it definitely does sneak in a little bit. I think I am bent a little bit here. And, and if I remember right, I know one of these sides I had to repair some, some holes in the metal here. It might have been this one. Um, I think it was. I can't exactly remember. But, uh, but I'm happy that that's, that's not as bad as I was afraid it was going to be. But the front, uh, the front lip here is, is pretty, uh, pretty nice. And I still have some, uh, some height adjustment and things like that. But otherwise, I'm, I'm happy with the way that it's coming out. I really hate to say that it was those, those lift kit uh, bonnet struts because I really like those things, but I really can't draw any other conclusion as, uh, as lucky as I'm getting now when, uh, when they're not in there as compared to when they were. As far as I'm concerned, I got the wings set. So you can kind of see that one. That's just a scooch in. This guy over here looks really good. Uh, I pulled down pretty much as hard as I could on that thing. I don't think I'm going to get in any better. So now, this portion here, if you can look, that portion needs to go back, but I'm happy with the gap. If anything, the gap's a little, uh, a little skinny, especially towards the back there. But the gap on this side, way too wide, especially at the front, so that the bonnet cone up here is what adjusts this back height and the, the pivot in the front. So here I can stick my whole finger and that's way too big. This pivot in the front right here, this guy, is how you can adjust that height. And you can see I can go down quite a bit here. So I, uh, I'm probably going to end up bringing the bonnet back on this side a little bit. Bring it down on that side a little bit. And I think I'll be, uh, I'll be sitting pretty. I got this, uh, this problem here where it kind of scooches in. Like I said, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's, uh, that's bent. I'll, I'll use the contour gauge to verify that. And uh, I don't think the latch is going to help me there because in the area of the latch, it's pretty, oops, sorry, in the area of the latch, it's pretty flush. So I don't think the latch is going to help me. But anyway, I'm going to uh, maybe grab a bite to eat here. It's 5 o'clock. I skipped lunch, so I'm a little hungry, and uh, we'll move on. All right, about 6.40 or so. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way the gaps are. This, uh, this isn't perfect over here, but I've done what I could in the center. This, uh, this gap in the center is picking back up again, I think just because I'm probably putting pressure on that center pipe. So, uh, quite frankly, I'm kind of sick of dealing with it. I would like this bracket all the way as far back as it could go, and which is not, uh, not where I want it to be. I still have some room on that one over there, though it's... According to the paint marks, it's about where the where it was when the car was painted, I think, by the factory, but I'm not sure. So yeah, so I'm happy with this side over here. It lines up in the uh, the front to back there across across this seam right here. So uh, and it lines up pretty well on the door there. So this side's a little bit better shape, I think. But uh, I'm getting a little uh, tired of playing with the bonnet, so I want to go ahead and get a door or two up here and uh, see how that goes. I really would like to, like I said, I really would like to address the center here, but I'm not quite sure how. Maybe, uh, maybe some pivot tube adjustment over here that I can do, but those things don't really like to move all that much. So anyway, door time. So I struggled with this door before I knew I would struggle with it again. This was the one where I had totally disconnected the A post a very long time ago. And I think when I welded that back up, I allowed the, this side of the car to droop a little bit. And I think it's drooped just enough that I, I lost adjustment. So I pulled a good hinge off and I got one of the, one of the bad hinges from, from Dorothy originally that the, the pin is all loose. And I took the holes, and you can barely see it right here. I took the holes and drilled them out a little further to try and get a little play on the door. And that's, uh, that looks like it's going to be enough. I'd, I'd like to make it slotted, but I don't have any ability to really slot the holes, um, especially in that thick of metal. So I, I, I think I've got a way ahead with this, and, and to get it uh, good enough, I'm still not real crazy about the gap at the bottom there, but I think that's all going to be... Uh, a, a means of this uh, door jam back here 
with the, the burst plate or the striker plate, I think is what it's properly called. The uh, the other side, I never really struggled with that. I don't expect that to be that that big of a pain in the rear, but I think uh, drilling out the hinge holes and giving me a little bit more adjustment room on the hinges themselves is going to be the only way that I'm going to get this in. Um, so happy with the way the bonnet came out. So uh, so we'll see. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment below if you've got any tips or tricks in this gap stuff. I know it's not very exciting, and uh, you know, but it, but it is part of the process. Can't tell you enough how much I am thankful that I did not paint the car before doing this. Anyway, have a good rest of your week. Cheers.